Hi, my name is Abel. I'm a principal cloud advocate specializing in DevOps. And today, I have Neil with me. Hey, Abel, thanks for having me You're here. Uh, my name is Neil Peterson. I'm a senior program manager in the Developer Experiences Group, working on ARM tools for Visual Studio Code. Cool. Um, so you got a real bunch of cool stuff to show me today, don't you? Yeah, I think what we'll do is just a quick uh, tour of the ARM tools for Visual Studio Code, and, and really, let's just write an ARM template from scratch, and, and as we're doing so, we'll explore some of the new features that we've got. Awesome. Cool. So um, what we have here is I've got Visual Studio Code open. We can see I've got a, a file here, Azure Deploy.json. Um, one thing I want to point out before we get going is look at the, lang the like the detected language down here in the bottom right-hand corner of Visual Studio Code. We can see that it's JSON. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's important, and we'll, we'll talk about why here in just a moment. Um, so kind of the first thing that you need to do when building an ARM template is really scaffold out uh, the different areas um, that are required by the template, and we make that really easy. Um, so within this JSON file, I'm just going to type in ARM, and we can see that we've got the, this pop-up uh, selection menu. Yep. Um, and in here, we can see that I can... Uh, and what this is going to do is just scaffold out the template for us. Now, we can deploy ARM templates to resource groups, uh, management groups, some subscriptions, and tenants, and we've got scaffolding for each of those. But I'm just going to select this first one, which is going to create a template that's going to be deployed to a resource group. Cool. And notice that it puts in all the areas that you need to create when building a template, such as parameters, variables, resources, outputs, etc. cetera. Um, and this is a deployable template. But it's not going to do anything. Um, <laughs> the point of ARM templates is to deploy and configure resources into, sure. into Azure. So let's go ahead and add a resource. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, bring my cursor into the resources section. And once again, I'm going to type in ARM. And notice that it now gives me this big list. And it's a list of resources mm -hmm. um, that I can add directly to the template. Cool. And I'm going to add in a container group or a container instance. Okay. Um, so that quickly, um, I've got the JSON or the, the ARM templating language mm -hmm. needed to deploy a container instance. Yes. Um, a couple other things to point out here. Notice that the language changed from JSON to Azure Resource Manager template. Oh. And this is really important. So what we have here is um, a language server specific to uh, the ARM templating language that mm -hmm. understands the language. And this is going to allow us to do greater things like, or it's going to give us greater capabilities around validation, auto-completion, et cetera. So rather than working with a JSON document, we are now working with an ARM template document. Nice. Um, also notice over here on the left-hand side, I've got this ARM template outline. This is going to allow us to navigate, navigate around our template as they get complex mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, as well, notice here that we've got a couple problems. So not only does this extension help you write ARM templates, but it helps you validate that those templates are good before your deployment. Yeah. Um, this snippet does need a little configuration, and that's what these problems are here. So let's go ahead and fix some of those up, and while we're doing it, we'll see some of the features. Okay. So notice that we've got a port here. It's got a little squiggly line under it. Mm -hmm. If I hover over it, we can see that it's expecting an integer, where we actually have a string here. So these are the things that we're going to need to go fix up. Now, I could just put... Um, an integer in here, and that's going to fix it up. But we want to do things, you know, kind of in a best practices way. So rather than hard code some of these values, let's go ahead and create some variables. Okay. And these are just like variables in a script or a programming language, just uh, just uh, values that we're going to substitute inside the code. Okay. Now once again, I can type in arm and type in a v, and we can see we've got a snippet for variables. Now variables are pretty easy to write. Cool. It's really just a key value pair. So I'll just do port, and we'll give it a value of 80. And I'm going to create a couple others while I'm up here. I'll create one for memory with a value of 4 and CPU oop, with a value of 1. Okay. Now notice that these are also now have validation issues, but mm -hmm. if we hover over them we can see that it's just that the variable's been defined but never used. Got it. So let's go ahead and use those. So I'm actually going to fix this one up. I'll just remove that, hit some double quotes, an opening bracket, uh, which indicates that we're going to write an expression. And this is when we want to do things like use variables, use functions, concatenate a bunch of strings or what what whatnot. Gotcha. Um, and then it gives me a list of everything that I can add into that expression. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to type in V because we want to we want to build this expression using a variable. Okay. Um, it auto completes that. I'll put in a single quote, and it now gives me a list of all the variables cool. that are defined. And I'll go ahead and select port. Okay. And I'm just going to quickly do this for the rest of these here. Now on the CPU variable, and then for memory, we'll do the same thing. 
Nice. Cool. Um, and then there's a couple others down here. Let me just tidy this up as well. Yeah, those snippets and autocomplete, that makes things so much easier. Yep. Um, cool. Now let's let's actually dig in a little bit deeper and let's actually stay in this port section. So what we have is the IP address configuration for the container instance. Mm -hmm. And then we need to define these ports. I'm actually just going to remove both of these out of here temporarily just to see what happens. Okay. Notice that I now have some validation on this ports configuration. Mm -hmm. And it's saying that we're missing a required property of port. So what's happening is that we're not just kind of linting the code, but we're actually validating the resources against schemas that have been generated from Azure. So the ARM tools for Visual Studio Code actually know what this container instance should look like mm -hmm. and knows about the required properties and whatnot. And it's able to flag here like, hey, you haven't totally completed configuring this thing. Like you must, you know, define a port. Cool. So we'll go ahead and do that. So there's my port. Um, let's take this protocol out one now. Uh, let's take out this protocol. Not only do we kind of validate on that, but we build that into the auto completion in IntelliSense. So look what happens here when I hit control space. It's now returned like, hey, we know that this resource um, under IP address, under ports, can also take a protocol. So we're going to offer that up as an auto completion. And not only that, but it's got a defined set of expected values, so I can do the same thing. So I'm going to hit control space, and now it's listed the values that we can add there, and I can select TCP. Cool. Um, so that's pretty cool. Like, so not only is this about validation and autocompletion, but we are validating against schemas for these resources that have been generated from Azure. Um, couple other things that I want to clean up here. The next one is this container image. Um, that's not a valid container image. So we need to give it an image to like a, a Docker container image to deploy. Um, rather than specifying that as a variable, I'm going to do it as a parameter. And what a parameter allows us to do is kind of define that value at deployment time. Um, once again, I've got a snippet here. So I'm going to do arm-p, and we can see arm param value. I'll give it a name of image. And now I want to give it a default value, but maybe I don't really remember how to configure a parameter or, or what the default value property is. Once again, we've got auto completion to help you here. So I'm going to hit control space and we can see the values or the configurations that I can put on a parameter, including default value. And then let me just give that a value real quick. All right. And then I will find that image right here. Again, I'll create an expression, but instead of using a variable this time, I'm going to use a parameter. Cool. And then just like with the variables, I get a list of my parameters. Um, so a couple other cool things that we haven't talked about is we've got some color coding going on here. Mm -hmm. We can actually see here that my variables are color coded as blue, mm -hmm. my parameters are green, um, and we haven't really talked about functions, but I've got a function here, a uh, resource group is yellow. A okay. um, couple other little simple things, like maybe I've got a very complex template and I want to actually, you know, I don't, I don't want to navigate up manually mm -hmm. to the variable of port. So I've got right click, go to definition, which is going to bring my cursor up to port. So cool. just kind of all the things that you would expect in a, in a good kind of development tool, um, linting validation environment. Nice. Um, one last thing I want to do is show off this ARM template outline. Okay. Now, it's not very exciting when we have just a single resource, so let's go ahead and add just a couple more resources and okay. see how this helps us. I'm actually going to update this name real quick just to make it easier to read. All right, my container. So my container, okay. uh, and let me just go ahead and add a resource. So I've highlighted um, the resource. Mm -hmm. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. Okay. Just hit a comma and enter. Okay. Again, I'm going to use our IntelliSense here. And let me add a storage account. Cool. Oh, let me clean that up just a little bit. And then let me go ahead and add something else. Let's do a Cosmos DB account. And now we can see that I've got my three resources, and I can navigate through these using this ARM template outline view. Very cool. 
Now, the one thing we don't have yet, which we will uh, we will get in, is a deployment experience. Mm -hmm. However, Visual Studio Code has a built-in terminal. Mm -hmm. uh, so using this terminal, I can now use the Azure CLI or PowerShell to uh, deploy this template directly from Visual Studio Code. Very, very cool. Man, that is some very cool stuff that you just showed us. Yeah. Neil, thank you so much for showing us all of this. Personally, I can't wait to start using all of these ARM tools in VS Code. Cool. Thanks for having me here. It's been fun. Thanks, man.